Arwell Jones, production designer for Black Cake, which is based on a book. Were you familiar with the book when you joined the show? Uh, not when I first um, spoke to the guys, no, but um, I feel familiarized myself very quickly, obviously. Um, but we, I was very, I'm always very careful about um, doing too much uh, research into the book itself if, it, if there's variations with the script, you know, because you can take the wrong turn with a slight design hint when you do certain tweaks. So um, it's it's good to have it as your basis, but it's very, very important to then um, kind of leave it behind and go from the script, I think. Mm -hmm. Well, the story spans uh, decades and continents. You're in Jamaica, London, Scotland, um, Italy, California, I think. I think that's everything. Um, <laughs> so uh where where do you start when it's so expansive like that like are are you how how much do you want to shoot location how much can you afford to shoot location like or can you just do exteriors and how how much is builds well in, I, I always say i build everything if i could so that i could control it um but you know uh the the, the greater um exteriors like london itself for example you know you can't replicate london you have to go and get some of of london for real the same with italy we have to get those exteriors but most of the interiors were built in the end in a studio in Wales, believe it or not. Oh, nice. Um, so, so that that was like planned from the start. You, you would just pick up exteriors where you could. Yes, um, uh, there were some things that weren't planned. We did um, we did two weeks shooting in Jamaica with a certain amount that we were intending on shooting back here, uh, but. Um, due to various things, we ended up having to replicate a bit of um, those locations from Jamaica back and doing a lot more of Jamaica. Uh, so we even did a, um, a Jamaican beach party in in a studio in Wales at one point. You you built a Jamaican beach in Wales. It, with, yes, with, inside. With, with sand. <laughs> with 80 tons of sand, yes. Oh my God. Where where did you get the sand from? Did you order it from Jamaica? Is, is there is Jamaica, Jamaican no, sand? Is that... Do, we did find um, as close a match color-wise to uh, the sand that we'd seen out in Jamaica. So um, it was a special uh, source. And uh, and then it was a very refined sand as well, of course, because we couldn't just get your normal builder sand because people are actually going to be in it, acting in it, working in it. So it had to be cleaned and everything. So it was, um, you learn a lot of different things in this job. <laughs> That's crazy. And then you just have to send the sand back afterwards when you're done. <laughs> Uh, well, we sold it on actually to various uh, some to schools and some to um, equestrian centers. Mm -hmm. um, I I love when when you watch um, the the show and and or, or you, like multiple episodes you, and and she uh, Covey travels. I I love that you could see not just obviously the changes in the places she's in, but the the color palette because obviously in Jamaica yeah. it's a lot brighter, and then it's a little bit more gloomy in London, which I think most people expect just, you know, rain stereotypical. Um, but yeah. then in Scotland, which is really her low point. Um, yes. Her story no, we, is very dark. We, yeah, yeah, we planned that. Um, right. One of the very first mood boards that we kind of uh, submitted to the showrunners was, you know, going with those rich palettes of colors, those warmth, especially the um, the idea of those warm memories as well, because we're, we're telling the story as a flashback quite often. Mm -hmm. um, so it was definitely we starting off with the warm colors, golden sands, yellows, blues, very rich blues. Uh, and then I really wanted to drain that out by the time we got to the UK, you know, and then you go a bit further, like you said, with Scotland, making it really kind of dark because, you know, just matching the story beats a little bit, really. And then just slowly bringing that color back in uh, for California, maybe not quite as vibrant and as um, warm as it was in Jamaica, but definitely heading back towards there because that's where the family settled and, and um, was raised. So we wanted to make it feel like a real warm family home. Yeah, like her her kitchen is blue in there. So there's... But yeah, and, and there's that lovely um, yellow um, stove in there that we kind of kept because we had flashbacks to mm -hmm. uh, when they moved into the house. So we wanted some beats that we would show as the house were, was when they moved in. And then, you know, as most people do these days, you know, that they've done a renovation and extended out the back, but they kept some of those elements. So the, we kept that stove, just moved its position and stuff. There was okay. nice little um, bits like that we were able to do. Yeah, be because she doesn't, you know, like normally when people move, they have 
their old stuff, their old furniture, like memorabilia, but she doesn't have that with what no, she yeah. went through. So. A, there was a different start point to the, even the yeah. even the memory wall with the photos and everything. There was a, there was, the start was the wedding, essentially. Mm -hmm. So so what else did you do like in her contemporary home to try to show her, her roots there besides like um, we, we we were yeah there were, there were some bits but we didn't want to be too obvious either you know because um as is stated in the um in some of the dialogue she was very vague about her youth so there were some vague hints of um of the Caribbean but not much um lots of lots of links to the sea and the water because that's her love um and uh you know we got a lot of stuff shipped over from the states actually just to kind of really give it some authenticity for the um for the interiors of some of the um uh, the kitchen implements you know a lot a lot of the stuff inside the house uh, had come over in a similar way we did a lot of stuff for the jamaica interiors we brought stuff over with us from after filming in jamaica for that as well mm -hmm. um we also followed the lives of her adult children in in the present day um so like they're lives and their their homes and spaces are very modern obviously so uh, how did you want to uh, connect them with what they knew which wasn't a lot of their their mother <laughs> or their parents no we, well, well, we, we didn't connect them that, that much with them with their mother's history but more with that um uh, the idea of, of uh, you know a, a relatively successful um family that had, had come along well had done well so the kids then you know set off in a good way in this in their own way um, we, we definitely wanted to go more, more that kind of artistic route uh, for Benny. So Benny's apartment was was great fun to do and introduced the artwork and and that kind of textured interior, which was really nice. Um, and then, of course, uh, you know, the, the work then and the, and the work environment um, for a brother, you know, just to, to show the different, the clash of, um, of types between them as well, really. Mm -hmm. yeah he's he's an oceanographer that another connection to the oceans so. <laughs> yes yeah but but still you know he's very kind of straight and has done mm -hmm. the right thing all through his life whereas Benny has you know yeah. kind of gone on her own way and stuff so it, 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 there's, strange, there's yeah. a definite yeah. difference in the two um did you create her artwork as well uh we found a, an artist in LA that we um mm -hmm. that we came to an agreement with where she generated some stuff and allowed us to use some other stuff so um, very much uh, uh, of the era that we were talking about and everything, Cal, my um, sad deck, um, uh, traced her down and kind of did that discussion, which was great, you know, because it meant it was right bang on. It wasn't, uh, and it was it was really good art as well. It wasn't just made up for the show. It was, it's, uh, it's genuine art from an artist of this era. Mm -hmm. Um, there's a, a pretty big uh, set piece, not to give too much away, of uh, a train crash. So what was yes. it like building that? Well, that the whole of that is actually high density foam because we rolled it inside a big steel cage. So um, that was all, um, all the wood effect is all painted onto high density foam so that it was safe to put not just actors, but stunt players in there. And we rolled it for real to let them bounce about a bit. Mm, interesting. Um, how many sets uh, do you think you you build for this? Just because you you cover so much ground, like literally, we covered like, a lot of ground. Travels. A lot more in the end, yeah, a lot more in the end than we thought we were going to in the first instance. But I think it was forty plus in the end. Oh wow! If you counted little, you know, we had to do little things like closets and bedrooms and stuff that just kept popping up. But it was somewhere in the region of forty plus, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, which one was your favorite one to build? Uh, um, probably Lynn and Covey's house because we were replicating um, that exterior, the lovely exterior we did in uh, Jamaica. And we lit did a complete duplication of the veranda that they had so that we could do a bit of crossover. I, I always hate to have a set which is just literally the door is your, is the, yeah. um, the difference between the inside and outside. You know, I always try and overlap so that you can hide where that join is essentially a bit better. So you do a bit here, a bit there. Um, and it helped us out in the end by being able to do a bit more back in the studio than we had intended to. Mm -hmm. uh, well, Arwell, it's great speaking with you. Thanks so much for your time. Uh, we'll see you back. My in pleasure. Time. Thank you.